We have another sheep who's stuck in its back, so let's help her out. So, I'm gonna lift her up. Now watch what happens if I don't aid her. If I put her down and just let her go, she falls over again. <laughs>
on the pulpit and then when we pass the piece, I'll run and get it. Welcome here to McDougall and Ogden United Churches as we have our joint services. Um, now I'm also afraid that It's already been that kind of morning, hasn't it? I mean, maybe not for you, but it has been for me. But um, I am so grateful for the temperature going up this week. I don't know how you feel, but when it's warmer, I uh, always feel better, like life is grand. So we come to this place knowing that in the 11 seasons that Canada has, we are in mud season. And that is uh, a joy because pretty soon will be spring. But we have some announcements for you today. Um, first of all, today is the Acadia Pan Pantry fundraiser. We run a food pantry out of our church on the third Tuesday of every month. And the days that I'm here on that Tuesday, the lineup is really long and people wait for a long time to have access to good food. So we ask that you join us for luncheon following the service and all the money raised supports the Acadia Pantry. We are having pulled pork on a bun and dessert, and a vegetarian option will be available. I am a big pulled pork fan. If you went you know, to McDonald's to get that meal, it would be $15, so join us. Yes, it's a lot, it's a lot. Everything is a lot of money now. Is everyone, does anyone else feel that way? I mean, I went and got a burger and a Coke, no fries. It was $10. Wow. Thank you, Barry. <laughs> See, I have people look after me. I am ever so grateful for that. Thank you. Oh, look, I even... Where's the pocket? There it is. Okay, are we good? See, I don't have the discipline not to turn my head and look at everyone, so this is better for me. Uh, there's a seniors lunch happening this Tuesday and sign-up sheets are in the west entrance. So if you would like to come to the seniors lunch and more importantly, if you wanna invite someone to come along with you, um, that's happening on Tuesday. It's an annual event, a sure sign of spring when we have that. Uh, Camp Casota next Sunday is Camp Sunday, and following the service, there'll be an information table set up in Hospitality Hall, so you can see pictures from camp last year and ask questions, and they'll be raising money to pay for the canoes at camp. Uh, this Camp Casota runs all summer. It's kids camp, and it uh, used to be associated with Calgary Presbytery. It's part of the region now, um, and that's a great place, but they also rent it out on weekends to churches and other groups, and we have rented it out. Camp Casoda, June 7th to 9th. So if you and your family just want to have, it's on Sylvan Lake, which is good. And if you want to just kick back um, and relax and be with other people from our community, Camp Casoda is for you and information about that will be there next week. The Chinook Region Annual Meeting, oh yes, May 2nd to 5th, uh, that's happening here at McDougall. So we'll have probably 150 delegates from across Chinook Winds Region uh, here for our annual general meeting, and we need some help. So apparently we require a ton of volunteers, which is a lot to help out with this four-day event. Sarah will be in Hospitality Hall. I saw her, where is she? Oh, well, there she is, she's on this side this time. So Sarah um, will be in Hospitality Hall and you can talk to her about the opportunities that we have for uh, volunteers and she can sign up for assisting you with other volunteer opportunities that are always here. And you can also get coffee tokens. Remember, we have a coffee machine down there now that serves uh, coffee that's like the beans are, I think they're ground right there when you wait. So. I don't know, I'm not a coffee drinker, so it makes no difference to me, but if you like your coffee uh, fresh, um, then you can buy coffee tokens to get coffee, and Sarah will also sell those, or reconciliation bookmarks, so much. Just everyone stop by Sarah in Hospitality Hall and say, how can I help? And she will let you know. Okay, and then um, we had some great news. You know, we've been... Uh, 
anxiously waiting to see if uh, Mustafa's family uh, gets out of Gaza and into Egypt, and they've been trickling through, but this week, every one of the members of Mustafa's, uh, or Mustafa's immediate family, are now safely in Egypt. And so that is something we are so grateful for. Apparently, they are living in an apartment with 14 people, which might be a little crowded, but I think it's probably better than the rubble in Gaza. So we pray for them as they seek adjustment in their new place and figure out where they're going to live. And we give thanks to God and to this community for the help that uh, we were able to give to this community to make sure that happened. And then of course, um, you all are generous people. You are so generous. And we are so grateful in leadership, those of us in leadership are so grateful for all your gifts. They um, have allowed us to make a difference in people's lives. At the Acadia Food Pantry during the week, helping refugees as they come into our community. Um, we have a benevolent fund for people who are in tight positions and ask if they can, you know, if we have a gift card so they can buy some groceries. There's so many things, ways that we are making an impact in this community. And it happens because you give. You give your time, you give your prayers, you support us financially. Thank you for that. And if you'd like to make a donation, there's always a offering plate at the back. And if you have a phone and can take a QR code, you can just do that online or any other ways. But mostly, just thank you. You are the hands and feet of Christ in the world. And you live that beautifully. And so as we come to this time, we center ourselves with the song, Cradle Me in Your Arms, and you can just stay seated for that. light this Christ candle. Today is what they call Good Shepherd Sunday. And we read the 23rd Psalm or have the 23rd Psalm every year on the fourth Sunday of Easter. The idea of a shepherd isn't really in our vernacular so much, but it's a strong metaphor in Hebrew scriptures. The idea that God cares for us and loves us like a shepherd cares for their sheep. So we light this candle to remind us that even when we are feeling overwhelmed by life, we might have got lost on the road, as sheep often do, when things are too much, as they often are, we have a shepherd who comforts us and cradles us and carries us home. 
Thanks be to God for that. So I invite you to stand as we are still in the season of Easter until May 19th. We'll sing together every morning is Easter morning. be seated. We come from so many different places. Chris, I'm going to plug this in here. So if you can turn that off and make sure I don't make too much noise. going to work this one. It's okay. I was going to play the Lord's Prayer for you, but I can't get it hooked in properly, so we won't do that. We come from a lot of different places, and we are struggling in different ways. It has to be. Oh, there. No, I don't have an iPhone. No, it's okay. It's okay. We have great tech people. Oh, there we go. Hang on one second. Talk amongst yourselves while I get this ready. I do have a... Oh, you do talk amongst yourselves. That's good. See, this is... Uh, Part of ADHD, I've learned, is height, something called hyperfocus, and the world can be collapsing around me, and if I have a job to do, forget it. Okay. I'm going to let the world collapse around me. You are, are good people. Anyway, here we are. I'm back. Hi. I am struck by the resilience of folks when I think about... Uh, Mustafa and his family and all the suffering they've had and the people they have lost in their lives. And still they find joy. They find a way. I'm struck by the people who have been overcome by grief because they've lost someone they loved and they've been with them their whole life and now they're trying to find a new way. 
how resilient we are. I'm struck by the joy we experience when a new child comes into our lives, a niece, a nephew, a son, a daughter, grandchild, and how much joy we feel and how we, how we know in our young people that we're going to be okay because they're strong and resilient and determined. And I don't know where you are in your life today. I don't know if you're feeling like you got a new lease on life or you're feeling overwhelmed or in grief or your body hurts, but through all those things, we are the beloved of God and the people of God. And we are together to carry each other. So I invite you to pray with me and I will do the yellow and you can do the black. God of Easter mornings, because you said yes to Jesus, we live in renewal. Because you said no to death, we live in hope. Yet even as we renew, even as we hope, we find ourselves pulled back to fear and uncertainty. We forget that love has won. Shepherd us so that we might return to the way of Jesus. Use your rod and staff to protect us and to guide us and give us courage to become the hands and feet of Christ in the world. So I invite you to breathe. And we are in anxiety and fear and trouble. We catch our breath and we hold it in and our shoulders are scrunched. But when we release and breathe, we become relaxed and the spirit enters in a way to wash out our fear and anxiety and we find peace. God of all, and of all is everything, of struggles and of joys, of challenges, of accomplishments, of sorrow, of joy, of spring and winter. Thank you for shepherding us through our lives, just carrying us leading us to the places that bring wholehearted living, even as we want to go down the roads that lead sometimes off a cliff. Tune our hearts so that we can walk in your way as we sing together the prayer that Jesus taught us.
That is a Syriac melody, which is an ancient Christian community. And I had, well, next week, hopefully we'll have it to pray, uh, have it sung in Aramaic, which is actually the language of Jesus. We ask God to be with us all the time, and we sometimes forget what it means to walk in the way of Jesus. Because we're afraid, happens to everyone, because we want, we want, we want, we want. And yet, mercy and goodness follow us, and our life is full, and we are at rest. But even when you forget to walk in that way, God is there leading us back because above all else, you are loved. And what is most important is you are forgiven and forgiven means you can move on. That is the gospel, grace, forgiveness, and love. And if we can figure that out, we will be in a different world. May it be so. Amen. And so we pass the peace because in with all that is this sense that we gotta learn to live together, especially as more and more people populate our planet, come into our country. So many ways that we can break peace and so few ways that we can come together. So we pass the peace to remind us that if we're gonna survive, if we're gonna flourish, if we're gonna truly be the people of God, we need to live in peace. So we say to each other, the peace of Christ be with you, and the response is, and also with you. Handshake, embrace, a kiss, a peace sign, or raise your hands to your heart and extend them out. So I invite you to stand as we pass the peace. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Pass the peace. Kids who'd like to go down to kids' table, Dana and Sadia are there at the back door, so just uh, follow them.
That was truly beautiful. Thank you so much. I, uh, having sung in many choirs in my life, I know that was not an easy piece, so. And beautiful, thank you so much for sharing that with us today. We have Acadia Food Pantry in our midst. Uh, members of our congregation of the Acadia Networking are all part of this, also um, Christ Moravian, big part of this. So I wanna invite members from the Acadia Food Pantry to come forward and just share with us what's going on with that work. Hello everyone, my name is Marilyn Bates. For the last two weeks, you may have seen the information table set up in the hallway. Thank you to all who brought in donations supporting the need for proteins. Your kindness is so appreciated. Donna Gordon, lead of Acadia Food Pantry, is at her church, Christ Moravian, this morning, but she will be joining us for the luncheon. She will be available to answer any questions you may have. Viviana Reinberg, our community social worker for Kingsland Acadia, is with us today. She will introduce the PowerPoint video, Sharing Our Need and Why Your Monetary Gifts Are So Important. In addition to Viviana, Jean McEachran will share her experience as a volunteer. In addition to our request for monetary gifts, there is also a need for able-bodied volunteers to load and unload items delivered to the church and getting them to our room in the basement. There are many organizations that support the work of Acadia Food Pantry, churches being Christ Moravian, Lutheran, and McDougall, community supporters such as Italian Market, Good Bread, and Cobbs. Another aspect of food for the Acadia Pantry is spins around. This is a food recovery repurposed, this is a food recovery program that repurposes food such as produce. Typically, two representatives of Acadia Food Pantry attend and choose the available food items, box them and pack them to their vehicle, bringing them to the church. I have not personally supported this piece, but it is my understanding you must move quickly once allowed inside, gathering as much as you can in the allotted time. On behalf of McDougall United, Acadia Food Pantry, and each of the volunteers, we are serving a lunch of pulled pork on a bun. For dessert, we have cake to recognize five years of Acadia Food Pantry that has been dedicated to the work of supporting members of the community who need a helping hand. Please join us for our annual fundraiser. And now, please welcome Viviana. Hello, and <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you for having me here. Um, it's always uh, a pleasure to be here at McDougall. And um, as you may know, I am a community social worker. I work with the city of Calgary, and I have been uh, supporting the Acadia Food Pantry since uh, they began its work, which is, a, is in 2019. Um, so for, here you'll see some general statistics about the need in Canada. Um, so. Um, I'm not gonna read it all, so you can just read it and maybe we can go f to the next slide. Um, so uh, a lot of people are were having a rental house uh, crisis in Calgary, and not just in Calgary, but many other places in Canada. So um, here are some uh, numbers, uh, so statistics, um, and if we just continue, please. Okay, so one in six children in Canada live in food insecure households. That's a significant number. Um, now, for um, people that access the food, the um, Calgary Food Bank, 
Um, a lot of people think, well, just go to the food bank. Well, um, it, it, it takes time, you know, and not everybody can access it, and uh, there are limits to it as well. So it's not quite accessible as such to everyone. Um, the Acadia Food Pantry provides food to those in need on the third Tuesday of each month here at McDougall. And um, so I sit at the registration table there, so I get to see everyone who comes in. And I'm often asked, well, are people really in need? How much need are they? Don't, don't they go to the food bank? Do they go to other places, you know, and so on and so forth? And the answer to all those is yes. <laughs> and um, they, we encourage people to go to the food bank first, as a first step. And um, we see people here coming who are seniors uh, on a fixed income, families with children, people who are on age, on um, social assistance, uh, people that are working also, um, but they're not making enough to meet their needs. We do not ask them to pro provide proof of their income. You know, we like to just make this accessible and keep uh, people's dignity intact in when coming and accessing food. We see food as a basic need that everybody should have. And um, so the food pantry, f um, depends on donations uh, and grants to operate. 100% um, of donations go to purchase food um, and supplies. Supplies are really a minimum. Um, much of the supplies I provide with my budget from the city of Calgary, so everything really goes into food. And um, we do this, it's a fundraiser uh, that we're doing every year. Um, so in terms of numbers, if you wanna have a, an idea of how many people come, um, when we started in 2019, we had an average of 38 households coming in. Last year, in 2023, um, the average was 61 households, not people. It was 202 people, okay? Now, this quarter, from January to March, the number already has increased to 75 households and 257 people. So what's happening is that numbers keep going up, resources are staying the same. Um, I... Um, I've already spoken about this, who, who are coming to access the, the food pantry. And um, we are presently operating with a grant that was given to us, um, uh, Christ Moravian Church, uh, the, the lead of the pantry who is from that church, she um, you know, uh, applied for this funding and we got enough money, <coughs> excuse me, right now to um, purchase food that is on top of what we get from the SPINS program. And uh, so we're able to provide eggs and milk and um, ground beef um, as a supplement to the vegetables and to the canned go goods. And this is gonna last on, until um, the summer until August. So basically from September on, we don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> um, we may only be able to feed like um, not even half of the people that come here. So that's why it's so important. Now we're doing this fundraiser. Um, we need $10,000 really to operate to the same level that we have been operating right now. And we only have well, there's a small group of uh, donations, people that donate on a monthly basis. That is very small. And we have uh, a donation from the Rotary Club for, of $3,700. 
and uh, one of the members of the group is looking at applying at the Calgary Foundation. Um, but I'm not certain what's going to happen there. So we're really kind of an, um, at a crossroads right now, you know, looking at the future, how things are going to look. And um, we function with uh, 33 volunteers. Um, all together. If you come on the day of the pantry here, you'll see about 15 people at any given time. But there are many others that do other things behind the scenes. Um, and uh, we are in need, the person who is doing the spins pickup, picking up the food, is away uh, now in the summer, and we have a problem. We don't have anybody right now to go pick up the food. So we don't know what's going to happen this coming month, if we're going to be able to go and pick up food or not. Uh, the 33 volunteers may save lots of people, but we do need somebody with um, it, to be in, in good physical shape enough to pick up boxes, um, also um, to lift and pick up box, the pop boxes of food, to have a large vehicle and who is available on a weekday to go and pick up it in the morning to pick up the food. And that is very hard to find among the 33. We don't have anybody, basically, among the 33 people. Um, so um, we do really appreciate your donation. Um, a $25 would um, f uh, help a family, a small family. You know, if you are able to donate 20, $25 each month, then, you know, that one family would be okay for the year. Uh, we'll take everything that you can. It doesn't have to be on a regular basis, but uh, we appreciate your help. Now, I'm, I'm going to leave Jean now. She is one of the volunteers that comes on a regular basis. Thanks, Adriana. Yes, I've been just asked to talk about the small role I have, one of the volunteers. Um, and I'd like to say that I really like to volunteer here on the third Tuesday of each month because I feel a sense of purpose, meaning, and appreciation. And I'm pretty pleased and proud that McDougal provides this venue. Um, at the pantry, I'm the milk, eggs, and meat lady. That's who I am. On this Tuesday, we had 35 four-liter jugs of milk. Imagine that. They were purchased and only given out to the families with four people or, or more. Um, on Tuesday, we purchased 72 dozen eggs and one carton for each family. As the amount of eggs, meat, dwindles, and milk, I find myself looking over my shoulder to check out how long is the line. And somebody sometimes will run out and check, and sometimes it's pretty long, and I kind of cross my fingers. Uh, but I felt badly this week when we did run out of milk and eggs, just for the last few families, but it's tough when that happens. Um, we gather around the table. There's a nice fellow in our congregation that makes coffee for us, and sometimes there's time to sit down and have a coffee before we open the doors for the people to come in and start. But they come early and they line up because they do know now that if they're late or at the end of the line, it might not be there for them. I enjoy my work with the food pantry very much, just a very small thing that I do, but it's, it's wonderful. If anybody wants to get involved, as Viviana and Marilyn said, Donna is going to be here. She's, um, she's wonderful, organizes us all, keeps us going, and I'll just reiterate that we really do need somebody with a vehicle and um, people help unload it when you get here and whatever, but we need somebody a little stronger than some of us to help bring food into the church. And um, thanks very much. That is just one of the things that is happening in our community that is making such a big difference in the lives of so many, and we're grateful that they uh, of the dedication of the volunteers and everything that's going on. Sorry. 
Our prayers today will be a song, uh, Shepherd Me, O Lord, which is based on Psalm 23. Um, a few things to remember before we, I was, I was going to walk around and ask you for your prayers today, um, but I'm noticing the time, and so unfortunately won't be able to do that. Um, we know there are cares in this place, and we hold them and in our hearts. Um, some things to remember, yesterday Bill presided at a funeral for Wendy Tilden. She's not part of this community, but uh, her um, family, we hold them in our hearts as we remember them in their time of grief. Uh, Myrna Wald, Myrna has been, uh, she was in the hospital and she's been recovering at home for a week or so, so we remember her. Uh, Sandra, Sandra Dixon often um, has health issues and has been struggling with her lungs, so we remember her. And also, um, you know, I saw Frank somewhere here this morning, and if any of you, hi Frank, if any of you have struggled with a health issue that you can't figure out what's going on and then you do, what a gift that is. So um, we're grateful to see you here and um, grateful for your prayers. And so, oh, that's okay, thanks. And so we sing the 23rd Psalm.
Amen. A lesson from Jesus found in the Gospel of John. I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd would die for the sheep. The hired hand, who is neither shepherd nor owner of the sheep, catches sight of the wolf coming and runs away, leaving the sheep to be scattered or snatched by the wolf. That's because the hired hand works only for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. In the same way, Abba God knows me, and I know God. And for these sheep, I will lay down my life. I have other sheep that don't belong to this fold. I must lead them too. And they will hear my voice, and then there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why Abba God loves me, because I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. This command I received from my Abba. May we lean on the Good Shepherd as we journey together. the fourth Sunday of Easter. We're halfway through the Easter season on our way to Pentecost. It's called Good Shepherd Sunday because the readings of the day always include Psalm 23 and also part of John 10. There's sort of three sections to John 10, all dealing with sheep and the shepherd, the gate, and all these themes. So this week for me was one about musing about sheep. And this sermon is mostly that, my thoughts on shepherds and shepherding. And it's kind of a hard thing to do because shepherds and sheep aren't a big part of our culture. I don't think I've ever been to a sheep farm. Cattle, yes, but sheep, no. But sheep were very prominent in ancient Israel. And the idea that God was the shepherd and God's followers of the sheep appears in many places in Hebrew scriptures. God is the protector, the comforter, the one who directs the sheep to ensure they're safe. And it's a strong image for the people in first century Palestine when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. That really resonates with them. They know what that means. It's no surprise that in Luke's gospel, the angels appear to shepherds because shepherds, even though they're marginalized in some ways, are also hold a revered place, taking care of the sheep, the food supply, keeping the wolves and the thieves at bay. But as I was mulling the idea of shepherds and sheep, it struck me that sheep have the reputation of being stupid. And you know, if Jesus is the good shepherd and we're the sheep, what does that say about us? So I decided to do a bit of research about how stupid sheep actually can't be. So this is the first picture. This is a sheep in the UK and Scotland called Fiona who had somehow gotten herself stranded on the foot of the cliffs in the Scottish Highlands. And some kayakers had seen her from the water back in 2021. And if you see the picture, it's a cliff, a little bit of space, and then the water, right? And no way to get down there. They'd seen her in 2021 and again in 2023. Two years she had spent foraging for herself at the bottom of the cliff all alone. And she became known as Britain's loneliest sheep. And finally, some farmers rescued her. They had a winch at the top, and they went down, and they were following her all the way up. And um, they said there, uh, there's only one step between bravery and stupidity, because if they'd fallen, the whole thing would have failed. But they found her in a cave when they got to the bottom, or she must have gone for shelter. So here's what she looked like when they found her. <laughs> she is burdened by way too much wool. And then this is what she looked like when she was sheared. They took off 20 pounds of wool. And even without the wool, she is still overweight because what would you do if you were stranded and alone for two years with a plethora of food surrounding you and no predators? So she is now spending her days at a petting zoo with other sheep and hopefully she's safe now. There are other few short videos, they're all short, 
Um, I saw in how stupid sheep are, and the first one shows a not uncommon occurrence for sheep getting stuck on their backs. And a farmer explains the problems when this happens and what shepherds need to do to keep them safe. <laughs> we have another sheep who's stuck in its back, so let's help her out. So, I'm gonna lift her up. Now watch what happens if I don't aid her. If I put her down and just let her go, she falls over again. This is because all the blood in them legs have drained away and all the gases in a sheep's body can't function properly when they're upside down, so we've got to let them settle. So again, we're going to lift her up and I'm going to hold her here for a minute. Then I'm going to put her on her legs and I'm going to hold her here. And I'm going to let her get steady. Let the blood get... So just letting the blood come back to her legs and the gas is settling her body. She's starting to get the feeling back in her legs because she's starting to put a lot more pressure on her back legs. This leg here is the problem. She's not putting it down yet. I think she's realised I'm trying to help her now. Well there, I had to hold that sheep up for about six minutes and I'm just going to keep watching her for another few minutes here just to make sure that she gets moving properly and she's just off walking back to the other sheep in the distance now. That's the plural and the singular, right? I keep thinking sheep. It's not a sheep or something, if it's one. <laughs> How a sheep got stuck on their back in the first place. So the internet tells me that they get stuck while they're rolling around. You know, when your dogs roll around and they decide to do that too and then they get stuck. Or they simply tip over. <laughs> Apparently it happens more often when they're pregnant or their fleece is full or when their fleece is wet and rainy. But the trouble is if they get on their back, they can't get back again and they die. That actually happens. So the shepherd is there to help them get back on their feet. Then I saw another video a few years ago and I laughed out loud when I saw it. And this is about a sheep caught in a crevice who needs help getting out. We have another sheep who's stuck in its back, so let's help her out. So I'm gonna lift her up. Now watch what happens if I don't aid her. If I put her down and just let her go, she falls over again. This is because all the blood in them legs have drained away and all the- Just hold the in the crevice again and I thought that is my life right there <laughs> that is a sad sad thing and it's you get stuck in a rut and somehow you get out and you end up right back where you started so the last video is one that caught my attention a group of sheep who can't seem to find their way home You guys are ridiculous. You, you should know better. Come on, everybody get past the gate. Come on. I know we'll all walk in a big circle. There's shelter and bales here. 
See? This is where all your smart friends were. You guys got it? Got it all figured out? All right. I really fell in love with sheep while I was researching this week. <laughs> The caption on that last film was, sheep aren't stupid, they just need a shepherd. Sheep aren't stupid, they just need a shepherd. And while I was reviewing these stories and videos, I started to see these stories, not from the point of view of the shepherd that we always read our scripture from, but as the sheep. And I think it's not really a very flattering image, being a sheep. Some people coined that phrase, sheeple. Do you remember back in the pandemic to refer to those who just seemed to follow blindly whatever our government told us? I'm a sheeple in that definition, definitely. And it's true that sheep are not mavericks. They're easily led astray. They travel in packs, flocks, they call them, and are trusting and need a shepherd to keep them safe. And I thought of we as humans, how we are better together. But sometimes we all roam around aimlessly wondering what to do. I saw a story about a flock of sheep in Mongolia who walked in a perfect circle for 12 days. Because apparently some of the sheep went a bit stir crazy from being in the pen too long and being sheep or flock animals, they all just joined in. Being in a flock apparently protects them from predators. They move together because if someone sees a wolf, they all flee together. So they follow each other. That's a, a protective mechanism for them. I can see the good and bad in this. It's wonderful to live in a community, wonderful to be cared for, the trust of others when you're wandering into danger, but you need a shepherd. Psalm 23 is this beloved and well-known passage of scripture. You can tell that by all the pieces of music that use this psalm as the text. I played several of them in Bible study. We could go on and on, they're beautiful. I think it's maintained its prominence in scripture because it resonates with us all. Our lives are not lived out in a pleasance of meadow where we can just munch away without a care in the world. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh yes, there are times that are like that for sure, but to be human is to experience pain and sorrow and suffering as well as joy and contentment. And so this psalm begins with this phrase, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Shall not want. We turned over that phrase, shall not want, at Bible study this week. Another way of putting it is, I want for nothing. And I don't think we know how to live that way anymore, wanting for nothing. There are so many things I want. This weekend alone, I planned a new kitchen and a new RV. <laughs> My husband says to me, I don't think we can do both those things this year. And I'm like, no. <laughs> Sometimes in our consumer society, we ache with all the things available that we can't seem to afford, right? It's before our eyes all the time. Some of them are luxuries for sure, but as we know from hearing from the Acadia Pantry today, there are people who want for basic necessities. Want, want, want. So this promise, when God is your shepherd, you want for nothing, just seems impossible. How can this be? And I think it's this, because it begins this way so that we reorient ourselves. Because after this, I want for nothing. And then I'm walking through valleys of shadows of death and you know, I'm, you know, darkness is around me and there's a table and my enemies. But it starts with, I don't want. And it's an invitation to reorient ourselves away from the stuff and release ourselves into trusting. So when you trust that God is our shepherd, then the rest comes easier. You need a good shepherd if you want to experience abundance instead of want. You need a good shepherd. The importance of Jesus as this good shepherd is laid out in our reading from the Gospel of John with the backdrop of Psalm 23 and other images of God as a shepherd. The disciples know full well what Jesus means when he says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus in his teachings in John is constantly saying, I am the bread of life. I am um, the light of the world. And this is another one of those I am statements. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. The good shepherd is willing to put himself in danger, even the danger of the cross. 
because he loves the sheep. And I've got to say this week at the Bible study, we kind of winced at the notion that if you're hired to care, it doesn't count, right? The hirelings, they'll leave as soon as the wolf comes. The idea that the ones who are in it for the money will leave as soon as danger comes just isn't, doesn't resonate for us. Because remember in the pandemic where the hospital workers put their lives on the line to care for their patients. And we see firefighters who go into burning buildings to save someone who is trapped. So I don't know that someone who shepherds for money wouldn't take care of their sheep even at the cost of their life. So I want to uplift those folks who care for money so important in our society. But we all know that sometimes it becomes too much. And we hear people in the caring profession say, they don't pay me enough to do this. It's a common refrain of those who want to quit the helping professions. So then contrast that, I think this is what Jesus is saying, with how you care for your children or your parents or the people that you love. For them, we don't give up. We persist, we insist, we continue. I've seen people who've been married for decades and one ends up with dementia and the other one care for them with such tenderness. They're heartbreaking. And I've seen parents with kids who are struggling. And even if they can't have them in their house, sometimes their heart is always, always with them. It's just different when you love. And that's what Jesus is saying. I am your shepherd and I love you. And he says, I'm willing to pay any price. I'm willing to lay down my life for you. And that's why Jesus is our good shepherd. I heard on the radio this morning, actually, I did a little quick revision of this sermon. Um, Eddie Glaude is his name, and he's a professor, I think, at Princeton, but he's written a book on leaders, and he said, we are given good people. We are given good people so that others can become good leaders. And that really struck me, that this is the whole point of following a good shepherd so that we can become good shepherds too. We live in a community that rescues each other. And we are there in the dark places of our lives. And we set a table where all are welcome. And when we become the good shepherd, there's a table of abundance that's laid before us and everyone has a place at it. Jesus is our good shepherd so that we can become good shepherds too. Not so that we can just lay back and go, okay, Jesus, tell me what shoes should I wear today? Do you know, to follow the Good Shepherd is not to release all your agency. It's to learn how to walk in the way of God so that you can lead and be with others on the paths of righteousness. You have so many choices in our lives, so many different paths we could take, and the choices we make definitely make us who we are. We're all like sheep in some ways. Sometimes we're doing okay, we have enough, but we miss the flock and the burdens we carry weigh us down. And when we're on our own, it's then we need a good shepherd like that, Fiona. And sometimes we're just rolling around, enjoying ourselves, and we get tipped over and can't get up again. That's when we need a good shepherd to hold us until we get our bearings again. And sometimes we get stuck in places feeling like we're squeezed from all sides and can't find a way out. And then it's then we need a good shepherd who's willing to rescue us over and over and over again because we're so stupid. And then there are the times we're hanging with some of our friends and we can't seem to find our way home even though we've been there a thousand times before. And that's when we need a good shepherd because left to our own devices, We make wrong turns, we go with all the other sheep, we wander in circles, and we end up right back in the ditch we just got out of. We partake of everything in front of us with no regard to how it will affect us, and if we are to live a life without want, a life of goodness and mercy that follow us all the days of our lives, and abundance, we need a good shepherd. So we together, can become the hands and feet of Christ. And that, my friends, makes all 
the difference. The good shepherd lives in love. Stand with me as we sing our final hymn, Love Divine. the good shepherd, Jesus says, and I will lay down my life for you, but only so you can become the beloved of God, the shepherds in the world, the ones who feed, the ones who comfort, the ones who show mercy, the ones who carry each other. So go from this place. Find your good shepherd, Jesus, and be a shepherd to all the lost and lonely in the world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all, amen.